Thank you for joining me today on Synthesis Workshop. Today is a total synthesis episode, and we'll be talking about the total synthesis of curvulamine by the Maimon group. This is a very nice, relatively short synthesis of a complex target. Let's dive right in. Curvulamine is a bisperol alkaloid isolated from white croakerfish that is a potent antibacterial agent and has a very interesting structure. In a retrosynthetic sense, the authors imagined that it might be possible to simplify the target if it could arise from a diketone like the one shown. Then, in order to make the synthesis as convergent as possible, they proposed this diketone might be accessible from two smaller fragments, which we'll call fragment 1 and fragment 2. Fragment 1 is a 10 pi aromatic heterocycle, as shown in the resonance form on the right. They imagined that combining these two fragments together might form the core of the final target. All right, so first let's take a look at fragment 1 and see how that got put together. Starting from a Bach-protected parole bearing an aldehyde at the 2 position, they carried out an aldol condensation using this enone partner. Then they found that treating the substrate with DBU at 150 degrees under microwave irradiation allowed the cyclization to produce fragment 1. For fragment 2, the authors utilized the cyanohydrin as a masked aldehyde in order to use this fragment as an acyl anion equivalent. By using the cyanohydrin rather than the aldehyde, they were able to invert the polarity of the functional group and use it in an unplung fragment coupling later. To make fragment 2, they took 2 methyl parole and alkylated with this alpha bromoester using sodium hydride. After alkylating the nitrogen, they treated with diacetyl aluminum hydride, dibal, in order to convert the ester into an aldehyde. Finally, they masked the aldehyde as a cyanohydrin by treating with TMS cyanide to arrive at the completed fragment, which was used without purification. Now, to combine the fragments, they treated with sodium HMDS to utilize the cyanohydrin as an acyl anion equivalent. Then, Treatment with N-iodosuccinamide allowed them to trap with iodine. This was a reaction of an achiral starting material with a racemic cyanohydrin, and no chiral information was involved, so the product was also racemic. Importantly, they found that the relative stereochemistry of the C2 stereocenter was set incorrectly, so they needed to fix that later. Next, photolysis of the carbon iodine bond using a Kessel lamp allowed them to generate a radical that could be trapped intramolecularly by the parole. They continued by using a lithiated enol ether to attack the northwest ketone and a convex facial addition, which then cyclized to form the hemiketal in situ. At this stage, the authors were able to fix the stereochemistry at this methylbearing stereocenter to some degree. By treating with sodium methoxide, they were able to epimerize the starting material and form a diastereomeric mixture. Then, they activated the bridgehead tertiary alcohol with phenylchlorothioneformate, which allowed the separation of the diastereomeric product mixture. Importantly, the wrong diastereomer, which had been carried through this step, could be recycled using the sodium methoxide protocol we saw a minute ago. Then, a barton mccombe deoxygenation resulted in removal of the bridgehead oxygen. Subsequent treatment with HCl converted the ethyl vinyl ether moiety into a methyl ketone. Finally, CBS reduction of the racemic mixture of starting materials gave selective reduction of each enantiomer from the top face of the ketone, which resulted in a stereodivergent reduction to arrive at highly enantio-enriched curvolamine, as well as 12-epicurvolamine. Fortunately, these products were separable, and this ended up being a very nice approach to getting multiple targets with the same synthetic route. With that, the Maimon group completed the synthesis of the challenging bisparol alkaloid curvolamine. Thank you for joining us today on Synthesis Workshop. Feel free to like and subscribe and send any questions and comments you have to us by email. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date and see you next time.